Welcome to the Truth Chronicles. Imagine, if you will, the greatest conspiracy theory of the 20th century. The moon landing was a hoax, orchestrated by none other than NASA itself. Yes, it's a concept that has both baffled and fascinated many since Neil Armstrong first set foot on the lunar surface back in the summer of 69. The theory has taken on a life of its own, with a multitude of claims questioning the authenticity of the moon landing. From the American flag that appeared to wave in the vacuum of space, to the suspicious absence of stars in the photographs, the seemingly missing crater under the lunar module, and even the baffling shadows that contradict each other. Each theory more intriguing than the last, pulling you into a labyrinth of questions and doubts. But are these theories grounded in reality, or mere figments of our imagination? Let's delve into the facts. Firstly, the moon landing was not a singular event. It was a series of missions carried out by NASA's Apollo program. This program, a monumental undertaking, spanned from 1969 to 1972, a period of intense scientific discovery and space exploration. Let's delve deeper into this. The Apollo program consisted of six manned missions. That's right, six separate journeys out of our atmosphere and into the cold expanse of space. Each mission was crewed by a team of highly trained astronauts, individuals who devoted their lives to the exploration of the final frontier. From Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, who first set foot on the lunar surface during Apollo 11, to Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt, the last men to walk on the moon during Apollo 17. The timeline of these missions is also noteworthy. The first successful landing, Apollo 11, took place on July 20th, 1969. This was followed by Apollo 12 in November of the same year. The subsequent missions, Apollo 14, 15, 16 and 17, took place in the years from 1971 to 1972. Each mission was meticulously planned, with the astronauts spending countless hours in training and preparation. Now think about this. If the moon landing was a hoax, faking it once would have required an extraordinary level of deception. But faking it six times? Over the course of three years? With different astronauts, different lunar sites, and thousands of scientists, engineers, and technicians involved? That would have required an unimaginable level of deception, one that strains credulity. Moreover, the sheer complexity and diversity of these missions make the idea of a hoax even more improbable. Each mission had its own unique objectives, ranging from scientific research to geological surveys. They brought back hundreds of pounds of moon rocks and conducted numerous experiments, providing invaluable insights into the moon's geology and environment. With so many missions, a hoax would have required an unimaginable level of deception. The evidence overwhelmingly suggests that the moon landings were a genuine human achievement, a testament to our capacity for exploration and discovery. Moreover, the moon landings were independently tracked by various countries and organizations, including the Soviet Union. This fact alone carries significant weight. You see, during the late 60s and early 70s, the US and the Soviet Union were embroiled in a fierce space race. Each of these superpowers was vying for the upper hand, striving to showcase their technological prowess and supremacy to the world. Now, imagine for a moment, the moon landing was indeed a grand hoax. This would mean that not only did the US fool its own citizens, but also managed to deceive the watchful eyes of its biggest rival, the Soviet Union, along with other independent organizations around the globe. The implications of such a worldwide collusion are mind-boggling. In essence, we're talking about an elaborate ruse that would have involved countless individuals across multiple countries, all maintaining absolute silence for over half a century. A hoax of this magnitude would have required global cooperation, an unlikely scenario to say the least. Now let's tackle the theories head on and separate fact from fiction. Let's begin with the flag. One of the most frequently cited pieces of evidence against the moon landing is the American flag's movement. Critics argue that in the vacuum of space, the flag should not ripple or wave. However, this theory neglects a key piece of information. The flag was designed with a horizontal bar at the top to keep it extended. As the astronauts planted it on the moon's surface, the flag naturally moved, giving the illusion of fluttering. There's no wind in space to cause an ongoing ripple, but the initial motion caused by the astronauts can make it seem so. Next, we move on to the stars, or rather, the lack thereof. Conspiracy theorists have been quick to point out the absence of stars in the moon landing photos as a sign of forgery. However, the reality is far less sinister. The cameras used during the Apollo missions 
had to be set to capture the bright lunar surface and the astronauts in their highly reflective spacesuits. The stars, while present, were simply too faint to appear in the photos due to this high contrast. Now let's consider the lack of a blast crater and the presence of footprints. Critics question how the lunar module could land without leaving a sizable crater and how astronauts could leave such distinct footprints without moisture to hold the shape. Well, the answer lies in the moon's atmosphere, or rather, the lack of it. There's no air on the moon to lift and displace dust as it would on Earth. As for the footprints, lunar dust, also known as regolith, behaves differently than Earth's soil. It is more compact and cohesive, allowing for the preservation of footprints. Finally, let's discuss the shadows. The seemingly inconsistent shadows in the photos have been a major point of contention. However, what appears to be inconsistency is actually a result of the lunar terrain and the position of the sun. The moon's surface is not flat, it's filled with hills, craters and rocks. These irregularities can distort shadows, making them appear longer, shorter or at odd angles. The sun's low angle also contributes to this effect. It's not a sign of multiple light sources as some claim, but a basic principle of photography and physics. As we delve into each theory, we find that they all share a common thread, a lack of understanding of the unique conditions on the moon and the technology of the time. It's easy to question things that seem out of place or counterintuitive to our everyday experiences here on Earth. But when we take the time to understand the science behind these phenomena, the so-called evidence of a hoax quickly falls apart. The moon landing was a monumental achievement of human innovation and exploration. It's a testament to what we can accomplish when we aim for the stars, or in this case, the moon. The theories surrounding it, while certainly intriguing, are based on misconceptions and fallacies. They may make for interesting conversation, but they don't hold up against the wealth of scientific knowledge and evidence. So, the next time you hear someone question the moon landing, remember the flag's design, the camera settings, the properties of lunar dust, and the physics of light and shadow. Each of these points, when understood correctly, serves to debunk the theories and reinforce the reality of this incredible human achievement. As we can see, these theories, while intriguing, fall apart under scientific scrutiny. So where does that leave us? Was the moon landing a grand deception or a monumental achievement of human ingenuity? Let's round up the facts. We have multiple successful missions under NASA's Apollo program, independently tracked by various global entities, including the then space race competitor, the Soviet Union. The flag, seemingly fluttering in the vacuum of space. It was designed with a horizontal bar to keep it unfurled. The absence of stars in the photographs, a result of the bright lunar surface, and reflective spacesuits creating a stark contrast. The clear footprints and lack of a blast crater, simply due to the absence of an atmosphere on the moon and the lunar module's controlled descent, and those tricky shadows. They're the product of the sun's angle and the moon's uneven surface, not inconsistent lighting. When we take a step back, look at the bigger picture and consider the sheer improbability of such a vast global conspiracy, the conclusion becomes clear. Ultimately, the weight of evidence heavily leans towards the moon landing being a genuine, historic event. Remember, knowledge is power. Our role is not just to question, but also to earnestly seek the truth. We're all astronauts on a journey through the vast cosmos of information, and it's essential to navigate this journey with discernment. Today, we've laid bare some of the most popular moon landing conspiracy theories. But this is not the end of our exploration. Let's keep questioning, probing, dissecting the world around us. But while doing so, let's not forget to anchor our curiosity in scientific facts and trustworthy sources. After all, the universe, a vast tapestry of truths, just waiting to be unraveled. Let's not be knocked off course by rumors or speculation. Instead, let's aim to comprehend the delicate interplay between science and reality. The moon landing, a towering triumph of human inventiveness, is just one example of this exquisite dance. Could the moon landing have been a hoax? Some conspiracy theorists certainly think so. Welcome to the world of moon landing conspiracies, a place filled with skepticism and intrigue. Theorists argue that the historic event, which captivated millions around the globe, was nothing more than a brilliantly crafted illusion. Their claims range from the seemingly plausible to the utterly bizarre, each seeking to poke holes in the narrative we've accepted as truth. They question the integrity of the photographs, the physics of the flag fluttering in a vacuum, 
and even the survival of the astronauts through the deadly Van Allen radiation belts. Some argue that the United States, locked in a space race with the Soviet Union, had too much at stake to risk failure. But what does the evidence say? Is there merit to these claims or are they simply the product of overactive imaginations? Let's delve into the facts, peeling back the layers of this enduring mystery, one piece of evidence at a time. One argument is that astronauts could not have survived the deadly radiation of the Van Allen belts. Now let's delve into this. The Van Allen belts are two large rings of charged particles that surround our planet. It's true, they are chock full of radiation. But here's the catch. The Apollo missions, they were smart about it. They didn't loiter in this radioactive region. Instead, they zipped through it rather quickly, minimizing the time of exposure. But that's not all. The Apollo spacecraft was not a tin can in space. It was a sophisticated vessel designed with radiation protection. The spacecraft was shielded to protect the astronauts from harmful radiation. It's a bit like wearing a heavy coat in a snowstorm. You know the cold is out there, but you're not feeling it. So when we take into account the quick journey and the protective shielding, we find that so, the deadly radiation argument doesn't hold up. Another piece of evidence for the moon landings is the presence of retro reflectors. Now, you might be asking, what are retro reflectors? Well, they're devices that reflect light or other types of radiation back to the source. Think of them as cosmic mirrors. The Apollo missions left a number of these clever contraptions on the lunar surface. Here's where it gets interesting. Even today, these retro reflectors are used by astronomers to bounce laser beams off the moon. These beams then travel back to Earth, and by measuring the time it takes for the beam to return, we can calculate the moon's distance from us. It's a bit like playing cosmic ping pong, only with lasers instead of balls. What makes this so compelling is that these retro reflectors wouldn't be there if the Apollo missions hadn't placed them. They serve as a silent testament to humanity's ventures into space. This is irrefutable evidence that the Apollo missions did land on the moon. The moon landing missions brought back a significant amount of lunar rocks and soil. Indeed, the Apollo missions returned with an impressive haul. 842 pounds, or 382 kilograms of lunar material. Imagine, that's roughly the weight of a grand piano, all in rock and soil from another world. This wasn't just moon dust to collect and display in a museum, oh no. These samples have been put through the ringer by scientists from every corner of the globe. From spectral analysis to age dating, the lunar samples underwent rigorous examinations. And what did we find? They're distinctly different from any terrestrial materials. The isotopic compositions, the mineralogy, the age, everything points to an origin outside our own planet. So when we hold these lunar rocks in our hands, we're not just touching a piece of the moon. We're holding a piece of solid, irrefutable evidence of mankind's incredible journey beyond our earthly confines. The lunar samples alone debunk the conspiracy theories. Every astronaut who participated in the Apollo missions has consistently supported the authenticity of the moon landings. These brave men and women, who risked their lives for the pursuit of knowledge and the advancement of mankind, have consistently stood by their experiences. Now, it's worth mentioning that some astronauts, like many of us, were initially skeptical. After all, the idea of humans setting foot on the moon was once as fantastical as fairy tales. But as they trained, as they learned the science and the technology behind the mission, their skepticism transformed into confidence. When they returned to Earth, they brought back not just lunar rocks, but stories and experiences that only a handful of humans can claim. They looked into our eyes and shared their truth, their reality. They've shown us the moon not as a distant celestial body, but as a part of human history. Their testimonies provide further proof of the moon landings. The moon landing was televised live to millions of viewers around the world. Let that sink in for a moment. In an era where global communications were still in their infancy, this feat was nothing short of miraculous. Picture this. Families huddled around their television sets, eyes wide in awe, as the grainy image of an astronaut stepping onto the lunar surface flashed across their screens. But here's where it gets even more interesting. These broadcasts weren't just picked up by giant networks or state-run stations. No, my friends, they were also picked up by amateur radio operators. These were everyday folks, passionate about their hobby, equipped with nothing more than a radio set and an antenna. And they too were able to tune into the broadcast signal coming straight from the moon. 
These independent verifications of the broadcast signal provide a compelling counter to the notion that the moon landing was a hoax. These broadcasts ensure that the event was not staged. Tens of thousands of people were involved in the Apollo program. Picture this colossal number of individuals, each with their unique role, all working towards one common goal, landing a man on the moon. We're talking about scientists, engineers, mission control personnel, and many, many more. Each person was a cog in the massive machine that was the Apollo project. From the engineers who meticulously designed the spacecraft, to the scientists who calculated the precise trajectories, to the mission control staff who kept a vigilant eye on every minute of the journey. Imagine orchestrating a deception of such a grand scale. It would mean that all these people, all these tens of thousands, would have had to keep silent about the greatest conspiracy of all time, not a word in over half a century. That's not just unlikely, it's virtually impossible. The sheer number of people involved makes a conspiracy implausible. While moon landing conspiracy theories continue to persist, they are largely debunked by an overwhelming body of evidence. As we've traversed the cosmos of this intriguing discussion, we've encountered a multitude of compelling evidence that supports the reality of the moon landings. Let's take a moment to orbit around these key facts once more. We delved into the ominous Van Allen belts, a layer of deadly radiation that some conspiracy theorists argue would have made the journey to the moon impossible. Yet we learned that the Apollo spacecraft passed through these belts swiftly, minimizing radiation exposure. Furthermore, the spacecraft was expertly designed with shielding to protect the astronauts aboard. We also explored the world of laser reflectors, those retro-reflectors left on the lunar surface by the Apollo missions. These devices, still in use today, allow astronomers to bounce laser beams off the moon and back to Earth, measuring our planet's distance from its celestial neighbor. Our journey also brought us to the lunar samples returned by the Apollo missions, a total of 842 pounds of lunar rocks and soil. These samples, studied by scientists worldwide, are distinctly different from any terrestrial materials, further cementing the authenticity of the moon landings. The human element also plays a crucial role in debunking these conspiracy theories. Every astronaut involved in the Apollo missions has consistently supported the moon landing's authenticity, standing firm against initial skepticism. Lastly, we cannot forget the role of media and public witness. The moon landing was televised live to millions of viewers worldwide, independently picked up by amateur radio operators, ensuring the event's authenticity. Moreover, tens of thousands of people involved in the Apollo program, from engineers to scientists to mission control personnel, would all have to be in on the conspiracy, a concept that seems implausible, to say the least. In light of this substantial scientific, technical and historical evidence, it becomes clear that the moon landing was indeed a reality. It's essential to critically evaluate these conspiracy theories in light of the substantial scientific, technical and historical evidence that supports the reality of the moon landings. Thank you for joining us on this cosmic journey through one of history's most iconic events. As we've seen, the moon landing conspiracy theories, while persistent, are largely unsupported by the substantial evidence we've explored. The Truth Chronicles is dedicated to bringing you the facts, debunking myths, and promoting knowledge. We hope you've enjoyed this odyssey through the Apollo moon landings, and we look forward to guiding you through more of history's fascinating truths. Remember to hit the like button if you found this video informative, share it to spread the knowledge, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay tuned for more from the Truth Chronicles. Until then, keep questioning, keep learning, and keep seeking the truth.